In most instances, losing your starting catcher for two months is something that no team would want to go through and something that fans would hate. Those teams, though, don't have a top prospect like Francisco Alvarez. This is an exciting day for the New York Mets in the sense that sink or swim, Alvarez era is here. Let's find out if it's here to stay. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter, at FinkelsteinRyan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Now, I should not have a big smile on my face when I find out the news that Omar Narvaez hits the IL. Because I actually think Omar Narvaez is a really good player that was helping this team this year. I thought his at-bats were good. Nice to have that left-right platoon uh, behind the dish. Thought, you know, as a veteran catcher, he was good for the pitching staff. And yet, how are you not excited when you just envision the fact that Francisco Alvarez is now given the keys to the car has as wide of a berth here to grab the starting job, as you can imagine. If Omar Narvaez had just lightly tweaked his calf, uh, you'd probably see some type of maneuvering to get a different catcher up, potentially. Maybe you see a Michael Perez. I don't know. I don't know. But when the guy goes down for two months and you're staring down the barrel of Tomas Nito being your starting catcher with, uh, you know, glorified 4A catcher, whoever that may be, being the backup, and your offense already has struggled a little bit, it gets to the point where it's undeniable. As much as we still said there was a lot that Alvarez could learn in AAA, and I do believe that. At this point, this is just one of those things where injuries line up for a guy and he gets his shot. And... It's hard not to bet on talent, right? This is a guy that is like pretty widely consensus, a top 10 prospect in all of baseball. Look around the game and see how guys continue to come up and thrive pretty much immediately. Now, it's not every single prospect. There's guys that need their learning curves. There are guys that need a month to get their feet wet, without a doubt. But around baseball, we see time and again these top prospects starring for teams. Look at Baltimore. Adley Rutschman comes up last year. Their season completely changed when he hit the lineup. Now, Adley is a different beast than Francisco Alvarez, particularly with the fact that defensively, he's as good as it comes. Alvarez, there's still some questions there. But just a pure bat, we've seen Julio Rodriguez come up and have success. Last year was Michael Harris on both sides of the ball. You know, you're currently seeing with the Brewers, you, the Mets just got destroyed by a team of rookies, by Joey Weimer, by you know Garrett Mitchell, Bryce Turang, all of these young guys that came through in a big way. And the Mets are rolling out the same lineup from last year, which doesn't have a lot of youth in it. Who is the youngest player from that starting lineup? Is it Lindor at, you know, 28? I think it might be Pete Alonso, probably. Probably a, a smidge younger. But that's an older starting lineup. There's not that youth. All of a sudden, you're going to get a lot of youth. And you're going to get a lot of youthful exuberance. And I think that's why the Mets should absolutely be starting him for the home opener. Uh, because let's see if you can catch lightning in a bottle. And sometimes it's best to to strike while the iron's hot on that. And when this news comes fresh and this kid... It just went from, I got to prove myself in Syracuse to, holy shit, I'm in the show. Throw him out there in front of the biggest crowd of the year and see what the kid can do. Because if Francisco Alvarez just happens to swing out of his damn shoes, which he's going to be doing, I promise you that. And that pitch from, was it Edward Cabrera starting? 
think I might be right on that. But if he gets that pitch, <laughs> and whether it's a hanging breaking ball or a fastball that gets too much of the plate, and Alvarez puts his best swing on it, and that thing ends up in the second deck in left field in that corner, the place will erupt and a hero will be born very quickly. This is part of the joy of a season is that you never know what's going to happen. And again, look, in the grand scheme of things, this is not a good day for the Mets in the sense that your depth at catcher just got depleted significantly. And that's something we need to discuss a little bit further because the loss of Nervais is not something I want to be applauding. (laughs) But at the same time, we were all eyes on Brett Beatty. We were all eyes on Mark Vientos. When Alvarez went to AAA, most of us, like myself, were just like, okay, that makes sense. Go learn, girl. You know, we will, we'll see you in June. And the roller coaster of a season brings us to this point on April 6th, where you're looking at eight to nine weeks of an audition where Francisco Alvarez could win the job for the next decade. And if you were out on the Mets after a bad series, I don't think there's anything that'll get you back in quicker than a prospect with this much hype in the starting lineup for the home opener. I'm pumped for that. Let's discuss that a little more in just a minute. Also, the Nervaez um, injury should be delved into a little bit more. So we're going to get to all that. Before we do, though, today's episode is brought to you by So Rare. Our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards and there's no cost to play. So Rare managers who rank at the top or near the top of their leaderboards win a variety of rewards, which can include so rare scarcity cards, game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, and VIP experiences like meeting MLB stars. Prizes may vary depending on the competition. Head to so rare.com slash locked on that's spelled S O R A R E.com to draft your team of free player cards to set up your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today. Now, this is not all sunshine and rainbows. Alvarez had work to be done still, and Nervaez was a solid veteran for this team. So losing him for over two months is not good because if Alvarez is slow to start, if Nito gets hurt, your pitching staff needs to be taken care of here. And at the end of the day, there is still that question mark with Alvarez, right? There's that question about, you know, what's he going to look like behind the plate and in a league where guys are running more than ever before. The good news, early returns in AAA were pretty strong. Five guys attempted to steal on Alvarez. Only two were successful. I like that rate, right? You want to gun down 60% of runners? I think Alvarez will be just fine. Now, that's not a rate that you can expect him to keep up with, particularly at the MLB level, but that's going to be key. He does have a strong arm. Can he be quick behind the plate? Can he identify and have that footwork that's needed to control that running game? That is something we need to watch. There's a lot that goes into it. The good thing that I will say is, is now with the pitch comm technology, at least if he's catching Max Scherzer, Max Scherzer's calling his own game anyway. So so that is one big benefit. But I also do wonder how the Mets manage this series and this upcoming period without Nervias, with Alvarez stepping in. Like I already mentioned, it would be foolish not to start him for the home opener. There'll be so much hype around it that that's just great for fans. That's great for excitement. That's great for engagement. Obviously, everyone's going to be watching the home opener anyway. But throwing Alvarez on top of that mix, going to be even more eyeballs on it. And I do think as a guy that seems to be a little bit kind of high strung and someone who can uh, maybe feed off of excitement and adrenaline, It'd be good to throw him out there. And I think it's a much more comfortable landing spot than what they threw him to the Wolves on last year, which was, hey, 
are seasons on the line, go face Atlanta Braves pitching in Atlanta when you thought your season was over. This is different. This is coming off spring training. This is, you know, playing a Marlins team at home and with an entire season ahead of you. Also with that experience of failing in the spot last year in your memory bank. You know, Alvarez didn't have the best spring. He did not hit the ball particularly well, but he did, uh, you know, I think do enough with the coaching staff and showing that he could be a catcher that the Mets didn't decide to say, all right, Nervias is out. Let's bring up Perez for for a little bit and see if we can get by with Nito and him. Let's do something else. No, they said, look, this is a two-month thing. We need the, the best possible catcher to help our team stay afloat, and they believed that guy was Francisco Alvarez. I think this is just as much about the, the strides that he took defensively being comfortable to go to him as this is about the offensive punch. Now, the offensive punch is what definitely gets you to pull the trigger, knowing that, well, here's a guy that we struggle a little bit against left-handed pitching. Okay, that's an option. It's an option for the Mets to say, you know what, for this this game, you know, we're, we're going up against a tough lefty one day. Let's get Nimmo off his feet. Let's slide Canna into center. Let's put Pham into left. Let's keep Nito behind the dish. And, oh, yeah, let's put that Alvarez guy at DH. I think you're going to see some of that where he's going to get some run um, just hitting sometimes where he's not going to have to worry about catching. If I look at this series and how they're going to map it out, I think Alvarez starts game one with Miguel on the mound. Game two, Kodai Sanga's pitching. And I believe Trevor Rogers is going against him. Now, Trevor Rogers, left-handed pitcher, you would want Alvarez's bat in the lineup against him, but Kodai Sanga threw to Tomas Nito last time. So I think that Nito is going to be right back out there behind the plate. But if Francisco Alvarez goes two for four with a homer in the home opener, I think you could see him sneak into the lineup at DH against the lefty. I think that it's going to be a fluid situation. I think you're going to still see a lot of Tomas Nito, but you're going to see Alvarez get half of the games behind the plate and probably steal a start a week at DH, and that's going to amount to a pretty healthy amount of playing time for him. I don't think they're bringing him up here to ride the pine. That's for sure. So Alvarez is going to get his chance, and with that opportunity... What you hope for is when Omar Nervaez is ready to come back, the Mets have to make a tough decision on Nervaez or Nito or carrying three catchers. And that the decision on whether Alvarez is the starting catcher of not only the future but the present has already been decided. So that's a lot of pressure put on a young kid, but he's wanted that pressure. He wanted to break camp with the team. He proclaimed he would. Guess what? You didn't, but two weeks into the season because of injury, here you go. Here's your opportunity. And if you're betting on the talent, I think there's every chance that this was the moment that we look back on that allowed Alvarez to announce himself and and be part of this team moving forward. And you know what? He's unable to do it. Well, then Nervaez comes up back, comes back in a few months and, uh, Suddenly, there'll be a lot more questions about Francisco Alvarez and his future as far as the top prospect status. But I think that this is a bat that uh, is going to quickly show uh, to be a game changer from that position in particular, where the Mets really haven't gotten much offensive production outside of you know, a random Wilson Ramos year where he was worse defensively than even the offense brought. Uh, the occasional Laduca season. There, there's been a couple, but really they've been searching for an answer offensively since that guy has got his number in the rafters. Um, and this is the guy that's hyped to, to be able to fulfill that. So uh, it's it's pretty thrilling for Mets fans, I'm sure. Uh, the question is just going to be, is he ready for it? And we're going to get into that element of this in just a minute. Before we do, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's the NBA playoffs. They're right around the corner now, which makes it the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers are going to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, it's super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scorers to three-pointers drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Also, you can bet on awards. 
Francisco Alvarez right now as I check. Line might move quickly, but he's plus 2,000 to win Rookie of the Year. So if you want to place that bet or anything else, head to FanDuel right now. Don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000. And bonus bets back when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Is Francisco Alvarez ready for this opportunity? Man was born ready. Uh, that's what he'd probably say. 21 years old for Alvarez. And you want to look at the track record in the minor leagues. 2019, first season for him, rookie ball. Didn't get too many games. It was 35 on uh, one spot, seven and another 42 games altogether. He was amazing, but still uh, the beginning of his minor league career. That was at 17 years old. 2020, didn't have a season. So 2021 was the first chance we really got to see Francisco Alvarez, as crazy as that is to say, because it feels like he's been part of our lexicon as Mets fans for a long time. But he's really only entering his third full season of professional baseball. But in 2021, at 19 years old, he was Babe Ruth for a couple of weeks in low A, where he hit 417 with the 567 on base and a 646 slug. Uh, it was ridiculous. So they said, all right, we got to put him up in high A. And he spent 84 games there in Brooklyn, uh, 247 average, 351 on base, 538 slug. He hit 22 home runs in 84 games and pretty much became, if he wasn't already, the consensus top prospect in the Mets organization. I think he was already there, but that solidified it with a big year. Last year, 2022, starts the year in double, plays 67 games there, 296 plate appearances, hit 277. 368 on base, 553 slug. You look at his way to runs created plus of 146. He was 46% better than your league average hitter. Hit 18 home runs and also had a dreadful like six week stretch in there. Um, you know, he got off to a quick start, but that quickly evaporated for him. And he had to find himself for, for a minute there. It was a, I think close to a month stretch where he didn't homer. And then it all came for him at once. And he was so damn good. They had to promote him to AAA. He did get 45 games in triple last year. I think it's a bigger sample size than even I realized looking at it now. Nearly 200 plate appearances, 199 plate appearances for Francisco Alvarez. Across that 200 plate appearance sample, he walked at a 17.1% clip. That's going to be big for him. The ability to draw his walks, to keep that OBP high, even if Alvarez ends up struggling to find his hits this year, and he's around 240 for the average, right? even if that's what we're looking at, there's every chance that he can walk enough that he gets that OBP about a hundred points ahead of that. So if he's sitting at 240, 340, and he can slug over five, man, you're looking at an unbelievable player. Now slugging over five is a tall task and maybe I'm asking too much for him. Let's just say it's 450. If he's got a 450 slug and a 340 on base percentage, what's that add up to? Seven, I would say, I, I forgot what I said, 450, short-term memory, horrible there. 450 plus 340 would be 770. When's the last time the Mets had a 770 OPS from their catcher? I don't even know. Maybe it's Wilson Ramos 2019. We'll look it up. We'll have some fun with it. Let's see. He hit for a ridiculously high average. I hate that season, by the way. If you don't remember, whew, the defense was bad. Man couldn't make a tag to save his life at the plate. And all of his RBIs came on bases loaded, singles that snaked through the infield. Just uh, frustrating. And then we saw in the later years of that contract, not a good one for the Mets. So we're looking back 2019. Wow, that was close. 768 for Wilson Ramos. So 770 OPS would be better. Uh, and I would go back and I would look at Travis Darno or uh, Paul LaDuca ever had a 770 OPS season, but it doesn't really matter. This is the Alvarez era. Let's see if he can do it. Um, yeah, he, he has all the talent in the world to come through here. I believe I predicted 40 home runs uh, for the Mets rookies this year. That prediction just got a lot easier to attain. If Alvarez is going to be getting, you know, 400 plate appearance sample size at the big league level, because if he does, there's every chance that he can hit you know, 20 of those bombs himself. 
So uh, it's going to be fun. Home opener. Can't wait for it. Uh, I will have a podcast after the home opener, unless it's just dreadful, <laughs> um, where we'll break down Alvarez's 2023 debut um, and what should be a thrilling day of baseball, the first at City Field. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show, Locked On Met. Thank you for making Locked On Met your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. They might tell you to go pick up Alvarez. Check that out. You can find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.